Hi, this is Sieg Schmalz, Applications Engineer at Microchip Technology. Let's talk about phase noise. Recall from the previous video that in the voltage domain, the spectral power density of a clock can be described in terms of watts per hertz, or more commonly, in terms of dBm per hertz, where dBm is simply the power of the signal relative to a one milliwatt signal. In other words, the power of a clock relative to a one milliwatt clock is put into frequency buckets, as I had called them, which are then used to create a voltage domain spectral power density lot. In the phase domain, the spectral power density of a clock is more commonly referred to as a phase noise plot. Instead of using dBm, phase noise is described in terms of dBc per hertz, where the C in dBc represents the word carrier. The term carrier comes from the idea of a certain average carrier frequency of a clock signal that is modulated, say, for example, in FM radio to transmit information. We will use 100 megahertz as an example. A 100 megahertz FM radio clock is the carrier and its frequency is modulated in such a way that a receiver in your radio can extract the information that is added onto the carrier via frequency modulation. The 100 MHz clock is the workhorse. It carries information. The information is contained in the way the frequency, and therefore the phase, changes slightly each moment in time. But the 100 MHz average ideal clock is not what we are interested in when receiving a broadcast radio transmission. In fact, radio demodulation is equivalent to removing the ideal 100 MHz average clock and leaving only the modulation. It is this modulation which contains the desired information that your car radio, for example, can translate into music or someone talking. Even though the spectral power density in the phase domain, which again, we call a phase noise plot, does not include information you are trying to extract, like a car radio extracts information, the basic idea is the same. When describing phase noise as it is quantified in a data sheet, we are removing the ideal clock and focusing only on the nearby frequencies that have phase power and therefore, we are seeing how the real clock is different than the ideal clock. In radio applications, this difference between the real clock and the ideal clock is useful information that is demodulated to create, as I mentioned before, music or voice and so forth. But in data communications timing, this difference from the ideal carrier clock is not desired. It is just noise that degrades the signal. That is why we call it phase noise. If the phase noise is large enough, it can result in data errors. Just like we can look at the spectral power density in the voltage domain, we can also see the spectral power density in the phase domain, which again is what we call phase noise. That is the topic of the next video.